that what I'm going to try to say for most of you will sound very new and very different. Oh, boy. <laughs> Even though it's entirely dogmatic, it really is. <laughs> How are you doing? That in fact is thoroughly biblical. Two please. Certainly. You kids enjoy. And we lost the massive truth. In fact, what we lost was a basis for a universal religion, a natural religion. Wait a minute. An inclusive religion. What is this? We found uh, in our overemphasizing Jesus without understanding Christ, we created a storyline that all depends upon a supposed sin that was committed between the Tigris and Euphrates River. <laughs> that just isn't a big enough storyline. <laughs> really isn't upset because someone bit into an apple. We understand. <laughs> He's just trying to completely destroy your Christian faith. Right. Ah! <laughs> what do you think of this guy, Lucy? But I have to say, it. Yeah, yeah, is he a heretic? The theory of salvation is so tough. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Hit, Hit the Bar. Bar. I'm Steve Kozar. I'm Paulette Kozar, and of course, Lucy Kozar. And I've got her comfort vest on. That seems to work best because of what she's been through lately. Oh, yeah. Poor Lucy. She sits around all day, we pet her, we feed her, we snuggle with her, we take her out and throw the ball. Yeah. It's rough. And you know what? She looks at the ball now and just watches it. And then we'll go over there and then we'll lay on it. She used to bring it back to us just last That's year. That's kind of like me. When I have work to do, I just look at it. <laughs> Lays on the work. Hey, right. so okay. if you haven't watched our show before, we like to look at some of the popular uh, videos of sermons and lectures and whatever's going on in the Christian church and try to critique it, have some fun in the process. Yes, because it's very painful. It's painful at times. And yeah. we obviously want to teach about uh, what, what, what constitutes good versus false doctrine. It's most important. Most important. This is the stuff that we had to figure out right. ourselves. And uh, we decided that uh, maybe we could help some people from our experience. And I should mention that... Um, yes... Drum roll, please. AGTV finally has our show There's up. There's us. Play a little bit of the front. I'm just going to play a few seconds. Because um, we're cartoon people. We're cartoon people. <laughs> we've been... I can, I can die now, pretty much. We're cartoon people. Yeah. Actually, in the beginning. Let's see. It's kind of fun. I'm Steve. I'm Paula Kozar, and this is our dog, Lucy. Just so you know, the uh, colors of the cartoon in that monitor look really bad and washed out. This is actually what it looks like. AGTV did a really nice job. I want to tell you about how to live a victorious Christian life. We, we gave up on that a long time ago. <laughs> and thank God. I mean, we don't have this destiny that we haven't figured out yet. You know, the burden that was lifted from us when it was this pure, simple, unadulterated gospel. If the Bible is God's word, why are we ignoring it? Why are we doing all these other things? Okay, so I just wanted to give you a little taste of that. It's taken a little bit longer than we thought for AGTV to get the video video up. And but, for us to even do it. Yeah. Well, we made some other ones and they didn't quite work. Right. And so we have a Patreon account where we're putting up extra material, not... This. Well... Not the cartoon people. The, the cartoon <laughs> intro is only for AGTV because <laughs> oh they paid God. for it. Right. We never would have thought of that. No. It's just a really cute idea. So... Um, Patreon is where you can see additional material. Some of you have asked, uh, can you tell more of your story? Yeah. And there's a little bit of that that we do in the course of making these videos, but we're really not going to go into that much publicly, but we do that more in the Patreon yes. or the AGTV, AGTV videos, which yep. are essentially the same. There's a little bit of different content on either one, but mostly it's the same. Yep. Uh, just That was just an update I wanted to bring up. How about our campuses? Shout out to all of our campuses all over the world. You guys are just so awesome. <laughs> and all the many continents and countries. And we don't have an Antarctica yet, but we're working on it because it's going to yeah. be awesome. Temperatures can drop to a whopping negative 130 degrees Fahrenheit. That's negative 90 Celsius. 
We're going to go there and find people. <laughs> yeah, we really do enjoy reading your comments. We love it. Yeah. We absolutely love it. And we, we love hearing about your stories and where you've come from and how God has snatched you out of the hands of the devil specifically. I yeah. mean, that's really what it's about. Although some of our viewers think that we are delivering them to the devil based yeah. on their comments. <laughs> yeah. This has been a crazy week. We it just, has. We put up our video about Todd White's new church, and then I put up that thing about Kenneth Copeland and the wheelchair guy. Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And then I thought, you know what? I'm going to put up a couple other related videos that right. are from last year. It's amazing how people don't watch a video if it's eight months old or 12 months old, which is another way of me saying, hey, watch some of my old videos. They're not really that old. Go back into the archives. And they're good. But, you know, I mean, we have She's not, not in them. She only started doing that this year. And, and neither is Lucy, but they're still really good. But um, saying that, it has been a very uh, crazy week. And I go to my job all day long, which is in sales. And I have the energy turned on full speed and I come home and I look forward to doing this with Steve. But if I look kind of tired, it's because probably I am. <laughs> Well, this is our date night. It is our date night. Yeah, that's pathetic. But what? It's pathetic? It's be it because I'm not taking you and whining and dining. We're doing that here. next Friday night. Yeah. He already has a plan, which is already so cool. Plan. We so, decided we can't afford every Friday no, night. We <laughs> so um, I want to do something different this week. Okay. I have a bunch of ideas, like always, and we were going to do something, and I yeah. decided at the last minute, you know, I think and we, we even, need to... we even watched it and studied yeah. on it a little bit, and oh, I come home bad. today, and he's like, nah, I don't think so. It's bad. Yeah, I know. You know what we were going to do? We're still going to do this. I just want to prep on it more. I want to... Yeah. I, I cannot... See, she's even upset about yeah. it. It's William Hinn, the new yeah. pastor at uh, Todd White's church. Not good. Not good. I mean, Not really, good, really Lucy. bad. Right. Just, uh... Uh, anyway, so what we're going to do today is I, I want to switch gears a little bit because I want to... It's not better. <laughs> oh, no, it's terrible. <laughs> However, it's another branch of where the church is getting way off. Right. And this would be the contemplative prayer, emergent church, yeah, the, 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 the woke new, church, right, the progressive the church, church right. the church that really isn't even the church anymore. No, no. We're going to talk about Richard Rohr. And Richard Rohr has had a huge influence on evangelicals, even though he himself is a Catholic priest and mystic mm -hmm. who has his own little kind of niche. niche. Yeah. To be more specific, Richard Rohr has something that he started called the Center for Action and Contemplation. That's a teaching center, spiritual retreat sort of a thing he started. He's not even Orthodox Catholic. No. Roman, he's, he's so far from Roman Catholicism that... After we filmed this, I wanted to give you guys a little bit more specifics. On Richard Rohr's website, he calls himself a very orthodox Catholic Christian, good standing with Rome, the Archbishop of Santa Fe, and his own Franciscan superiors. He wants you to see him as very orthodox and traditional Christian. In direct contrast to Richard Rohr, I found this channel, Catholic Truth, when I typed in Richard Rohr, false teacher, into YouTube. And uh, I love some of what this guy says from a Catholic perspective, obviously, but he's speaking out very strongly against what he calls New Age teaching. And I'm going to put some more clips of him here and there throughout our video. Hello, everybody. In this video, we're going to be talking about Father Richard Rohr, who unfortunately is not a trustworthy spiritual guide. But he is very popular. He's very prominent in his writings, in his lectures, in his retreats. And many people like Father Richard Rohr, and they follow and subscribe to him. But unfortunately, while he has many good things to say, and there are good truths in his book, many spiritual points made, unfortunately and sadly, they're surrounded by heresy and by New Age counterfeit theological ideas, a lot of dissidents against the Catholic Church, and more. There are many problems with Father Richard Rohr in both his teachings, the things he says, and the things he does. And we're going to be discussing these and showing that he is not a trustworthy spiritual guide. This guy represents his faith with clarity and with conviction in a way that I wish most evangelicals were capable of. But I mainly wanted you to see that not all Roman Catholics are confused liberals like Richard Rohr. Well, what you're going to see is really hard to um, kind of grasp because uh, this is a, a version of deconstruction. Yes. It's also really connected to postmodernism, although I don't think he would consider himself a postmodern uh, person. Yeah. Uh, that whole topic is one we haven't touched on yet, although it's really important. I, um, I did write a really good article on this topic for the Messed Up Church website, and it's the user's guide to 
Postmodernism? Actually, is that what I called it? I don't know. I'm sorry. Well, the other thing is... What this, is the other this, thing? This, this man really believes that... No, it's the cornucopia. He has the authority on really who Jesus really was and how we've gotten it wrong the last 2,000 years. And this guy drives me nuts. I know all of them have... Yeah. I don't know. And, I, in case you haven't seen this, um, we're making these videos, and we love the fact that people are watching. And sometimes people are saying, can you do a video on this? What do you think about this? What do you think about that? Or and, that person, or this yeah. person, or this and church. I do not want us, or anybody for that matter, to be the authority. Right. So uh, just so you know, for the most part, we're going to be almost always hitting the really famous people because they are the top of the heap. Yeah. And everybody else is duplicating them. Right. So if you find somebody that you know that's doing a church thing that sounds exactly like somebody we've already done, well, there you go. Right. The the theology is bad, and theology comes from somewhere. Mm -hmm. And most pastors are really being influenced by somebody. You know, they, they maybe don't admit it. They don't uh, reveal exactly who their influences are. So if if you if you uh, if that helps you understand where we're coming from, like. A lot of people uh, in the church think that, uh, for instance, Stephen Furtick is somebody to emulate. Right. Well, along that line, I was just reading a comment today where um, the lady was saying, you know, this last, I can't remember which hit the bar it was. It reminds her of, she's seen it before, she's heard another preacher do it before, which goes along with, okay, it is more of um, like a McDonald's. Franchise. That's it. Franchise. And so... Especially the ARC. Right. And the Open Church Network and if from it's Craig not, Rochelle. And if it's not that, then you've got pastors who really like the teaching of that pastor or priest or whoever, and they will emulate them. Mm -hmm. So nothing's really new, except for what's up on the top. Yeah. Uh, this is one of the things that we're really going to explore in more detail, historical, theological mm -hmm. detail in our Patreon yes. and AGTV series. Yep. And um, we're going to always do the main everything on this YouTube channel. Yes, so I will. never want anybody to feel obligated to, to become a patron or to join right. AGTV. That's just an extra thing. Right. So please continue watching for free. Don't spend money if you can't afford it. Same with the stupid T-shirts and mugs and stuff. Okay, T-shirt. Oh, yeah, I forgot. That. Okay. <laughs> we ordered some because we wanted to see what they were like. Okay, wait, no. I ordered this one. What's Hang missing, on. boys and girls? <laughs> What's missing? <laughs> you forgot to put the printing on it. Galatians girl. Well, you have the Galatians girl sweatshirt. Yeah. However, However, let me tell you this. So I got the sweatshirt, which is fantastic. T-shirt I love. Actually, it's really comfortable, and I like the neckline. Are you frustrated with us yet that we haven't gotten to the point of this I know. whole video Anyway, yet? just saying that how they treated me was really great because, you know, I was just a customer. And I said, hey, this is wrong. There's no printing. They're like, keep the T-shirt. We will make it right. We'll send you a new one. So that was really good because being a salesperson, customer service is really important to me. So just to know that makes makes me very happy. And I ordered some things that haven't gotten here yet. But as soon Basta as mugs. We're going to have Basta and it's <laughs> Lift Ink and all that stuff. It's fun. But seriously, it's all for fun. Yeah, we make a few dollars on each thing. Right. And it helps us a little bit, but don't ever feel obligated ever. No. To ever give money to us. No, please don't. You know, I, we appreciate the support we get. We but, do. But, and we, we, very we are getting do. really close to the place where I can do this full time, which is my goal. That'd I, be pretty amazing. Boom, boom, boom. I want to keep hitting these guys. <laughs> I really do. He's got plenty of work to do I got so that. much material and so much, yeah. um, you know, ideas. and So anyway, I just want to mention yes. that I have a lot of, a lot <clears> of resources. In fact, I don't even think I've pointed this out before, but I've got this. Read this first. These are the bullet points that I think are really helpful ideas when you're coming out of a false church and you're kind of trying to get the big picture of things. Yeah. I wrote that. I have this thing called the user's guide where I'm trying to kind of walk you through some of the things and some of the key articles that are already here. Instead of you just trying to find articles randomly, this kind of walks you through some of the, the major categories. Um, it's also really, there's, there's um, uh, right beneath that under the same thing, resources, uh, I have recommended websites, and you'll see, uh, you know, some of the people you guys, most of you already know, some of these you might not, some are real active, some are not, uh, here's some of the, and this is all for people who are, um, this isn't like a, a general a church 
website that teaches Christianity from their church. This is more about discernment, trying to kind of find your way out of what's wrong and uh, trying to get a grasp on some of the discernment issues. What helped you? These are the sites, many of which that were helpful to me or or we personally know the people that are doing them. Um, Cult Watch, Spiritual Research Network, Christian Answers for the New Age, which reminds me... Marsha Montenegro, I've done some uh, podcasts with her. By the way, the podcast has been kind of dormant for a while. Yeah. Daniel Long and and I just couldn't squeeze it in. And again, uh, um, we're getting to the place where I can do this full time and I'll get more podcasts and I'll do more interviews. Again, that'll be another avenue for me to get more teaching out there in a different format. Anyway, uh, Marsha Montenegro is is just a, a really great scholar and teacher. And she has done a lot about the Enneagram or the Enneagram. And I just haven't been able to get to this topic. We did one podcast a couple years ago. Search her on YouTube. Her yeah. website is called Christian Answers for the New Age. She also has a lot of information about this progressive Christianity. I should have mentioned this, but Marcia Montenegro is the co-writer of this book, Richard Rohr and the Enneagram Secret. This is a screenshot from Amazon.com, so you may want to check out that book. And also, our friend Clint Adams, who has a... Um, website called The Ernest Lehman, just did a book review on that very book, and he just wrote this a few days ago. So I will put a link to this article in the description of the video you're watching right now. Elisa Childers is another one who's doing a great job explaining what is this whole progressive Christianity, this woke Christianity, this postmodernism, this emergent stuff. It's all very uh, overlapping and Mm -hmm. related. And she even has an article. I don't remember if I left it up here. No, I didn't. Uh, But I'm going to put some articles. Mm -hmm. Again, if you're new to YouTube, every video has articles right underneath the the video. Before the comments, between the comments and the and the video itself, there's a little button, a little arrow, and it opens up. It usually Mm -hmm. says more information depending on what browser. And you'll see the links there. And that'll um, if if we mention anything, it'll it'll be there. And I just want you so badly to be researchers. <laughs> yeah, to to be your own person. Take responsibility Please. for your own spirituality, your own understanding of your faith. And and that's what really what we're trying to do. We started out with this hit the bar as in hit the space bar. He wanted my real time reaction to something I've never seen before because I never got into all these crazy teachings that he would watch and then and then and then critique. Um but it's really grown to be, you know, what can we do because we're reading the comments and so many of you and we we try to answer everybody, um, have questions and are but coming. But we don't. But we don't. No. And and we're trying, but, you know. It's just too many. At work, you know, like on my break, I'm going through trying to yeah. answer people. But, but the point I'm trying to make is that. What is the point you're trying to make, honey? Thank you. We want to equip you. We want to give you yes. the information. We want to give you um what you need so that you can read for yourself of, and then discern where am I at? You know, what is this church that I'm going to at? And mm-hmm. what do they believe? And, you know, um, what, do, what does the Bible say? And so Steve's done a lot of work in the past seven years as to searching that all out. And um, as we are talking about hit the bar and it's, you know, real time, um, last time we prepared more and we had scripture ready more, um, we kind of did with the last one, but then he changed it because <laughs> that's what he does. This guy doesn't even use scripture, so it doesn't matter. Well, you'll see. He kind of refers to it, but he doesn't really anyway, use it. Anyway, so so just bear with us. This thing is evolving as we're evolving. and we're, we're Don't apologize. That's right. They know who we are. And and we see what, what you guys are asking. So um, we appreciate it, and here we go. Okay, so this is Richard. Get ready. This is Richard Rohr. <laughs> And he's at his own little uh, retreat center where he has people come and he teaches. And he is, he is about to introduce this new book called The Universal Christ. Okay, so we just took a little pause and we connected a fan because it was getting hot in here. Because we have to this turn like off. A, it's like a fashion shoot now. <laughs> a technique that with some practice, you will learn enough skills to experiment with and give you better odds of achieving a result like this. We have to turn off the air conditioning. Otherwise, it's too noisy from the... And I get really warm. Yeah. Uh, but w- Which is good because I wanted to, before I start this, Universal Christ is a big thing in Christian news right now because of the effect this guy, Richard Rohr's teaching has had. Like, this is an article about DC Talks' Kevin Max. That's not his original name. 
I don't. I wouldn't know. Yeah, I forgot his original name, but okay. he changed it to Max. And he said he is an ex-evangelical. Wow. He said, I've been deconstructing, reconstructing, progressing, whatever you wish to call it, for decades. I've been in the outsider misfit seeker club for a long time now. Thank you for welcoming me in, and I've always been here. Or, or but I've always been here. Max added that he follows the universal Christ, though he did not clarify what that means exactly. Well, that's because you can't clarify what that means exactly. And you'll find that out when you listen to the guy who invented the phrase and wrote the book, which is Richard. All, all roads lead to one. That's how I see it. Oh, I, I think I got rid of the video. I accidentally closed it. Oopsies. Hold on. Hold on. I got to open up the YouTubes. You know, that's what happens when you get away from reading scripture and you get more into the world and you're about the world and you hear more things that we try to understand and make sense of our own without scripture. I would also say that a lot of Christian musicians, they're so busy playing music and practicing their instruments and rehearsing that they're not being educated. They're not being taught properly. I never was. I was spending all my time during the week practicing my guitar parts or whatever. And um, that's probably what happened to this guy. Like a lot of people in the Christian music industry, it's more about, you know, selling tickets and selling records and stuff. Not not in every case. There are you, some... you could say that with people who are professionals. In any like, field, yeah. But right. I'm just saying they're, they're up on stage representing Christianity and, they, and people look up to them as role models and stuff when in fact... They're oftentimes not really well taught, and they're kind of grasping with the latest thing, which goes back to the issue of evangelicalism has been so attached to revivalism for so long that it intrinsically veers towards whatever's popular. Mm -hmm. You know, oh, we got to get people in the door. We got to get people in the right. door. People don't like church. Let's make church something that they like again. <laughs> so again, what do they like bait and now? Switch. Bait and switch. Yeah. So some some of those people have been attracted to this kind of progressive. It's it's weird because it's progressive in one way, and in other ways it claims to be ancient and referring back to the very earliest form wow. of contemplative mystical Christianity. Okay. Which is really go. true. So okay. Let's I'm, go. Now we're gonna let him talk. Good to... Stop it. Okay. Well, this morning we have a, a big task. Uh, pray that I can do it somewhat coherently or well. I've been working with this material for a year and a half. This is the, this is the galleys of my next book. It's, it took me longer to write this than any book because I, I, I kept saying that isn't making it clear, as if I could finally make it clear. But I, I do want people to, uh, to recognize something that, in fact, is thoroughly biblical. Uh, <laughs> Thoroughly, not we're, somewhat. We're going to try to let him talk, but it's going to be really it's hard. It's going to be really hard. And the reason why we don't let the guy go all the way through and then talk about it is because we can't remember all the things that people right. get wrong. Um, I'll put this original video yes. in the link. And if you're bothered by us interrupting him, watch the whole thing all by yourself and yep. then come back. All 58 minutes. Yeah. But this is what you do. You say it's thoroughly biblical. It's just an assertion. Mm -hmm. This is what all these people do that we have been reviewing. Yeah. They make an assertion and they don't prove it. They maybe appear to prove it in some way, mm -hmm. but they don't really back it up. And mm -hmm. that's what he's going to do. Uh, is found by regular little markings in the perennial tradition. Perennial. I looked up that word and it meant ongoing like forever. And it's in my phone, which is recording us. So I think he's referring to the markings. And you said the markings. I think he's referring to the writings of scripture. Okay. But he's trying to be clever. So who knows? But we have to admit it was never the mainline tradition. So I can pretty much assume that what I'm going to try to say for most of you will sound very new and very different, even though it's entirely Dogmatic, it really is. So. This is another thought-stopping device. <laughs> That's it. He's not going to be dogmatic. Dogmatic would mean you're referring to the time-tested, everybody structure. believes this, the structured yeah. dogma. Dogma, right. He's completely going to deconstruct mm -hmm. Western Christianity as we know it, especially as 
really not even Protestants, but especially as the Western Christian church, which would include the Roman Catholic church and the whole entire Protestant Anybody church. Anybody who believes in Jesus Christ as their savior. He's going to refer to the Eastern church and make it seem like he's kind of doing what they did. Um, but he's, again, he's making these assertions to stop people from thinking what they should think. If they're Christians, they would think, wait a minute. What? Or what does that mean? You can't do that. You can't say that. Yeah. That doesn't even make sense that he's he's giving these little phrases to prop up his own authority and to stop you from questioning him. He's just doing it in a different way than some of the other people, but it's yeah. the same thing. Uh, but it's, it's, you know, sort of a subtext. Ah. Subtext of what? <laughs> He's it's saying it's, it's dogmatic, but it's a subtext. Yeah, let's keep going. Well, then going. It's, not, it's not the dogma. The dogma would be the primary text, anyway. Right. And to put it in one phrase, deliberately shocking, uh, Christ is not Jesus' last name. And uh, we've sort of used it that way. We've so lumped them together uh, that uh, we don't realize we're talking about two different realities. I'm no, not saying... no. Jesus is God's son. Christ means... The anointed. The anointed one. The, the, the one who is anointed, the anointed right. one. So when he says they're two different, he's separating yes. the two. Here we go. They don't overlap. I'm not saying they don't come together. <laughs> but uh, but you just one did. reason <laughs> right. we're facing the, the real impasse that Christianity is in right now, in all of our denominational forms, is that in the first 2,000 years after what we believe is the incarnation of God in Christ, we largely were overwhelmed by Jesus and trying to figure out who he was. Ironically, that's our gospel at today's Sunday Mass this afternoon. Who do you say that I am? Uh, but there's been not a lot of recognition of the Christ. And again, as I said, we so lumped them together and we lost the massive truth. In fact, what we lost was a basis for a universal religion, a natural religion, an inclusive religion. Huh. This is absolute nonsense, nonsense. And the fact that a Catholic priest is teaching this, I mean, I shouldn't even have to make a video on this. We ended up with an overly sentimental personal religion, which is what happens when you have Jesus without Christ. Why you can make him into a white man with blue eyes. And, uh, it's, there's, there's no corrective to that kind of silliness. And again, it's nobody's fault. Consciousness is unfolding. I, I know a lot of Christians were trained to think evolution is a bad word. In my vocabulary, it's the only thing that explains very much that we're clearly unfolding. And the second coming of Christ is you, and the second coming of Christ is still happening. It's not one event, it's the rest of history. But uh, because we didn't... I'm sorry. But as you can see, we could be, like, hitting the bar every aren't other impressed, word. Aren't you impressed by our self-restraint We were this talking point? about this. We're like, we just got to hold back a little bit. Nonsense. Yeah. I'm speechless. The, um, <laughs> the thing that's, that's just devastating is yeah. that this guy's ideas are in the Christian church. Yeah. All over the place. And... I didn't even show you this, but um, one of our best friends we've known since high school, the, his little church that he goes to, got a new pastor, female pastor, and she was greatly influenced in, oh. by this guy. What didn't you show me? This is a sermon called The Sound of Seeing. Of S-E-E-I-N-G? Yeah. Really like... Um, I don't know if, if any of you have done this before, but using the sound of a chime or the sound of this singing bowl. Uh, this is my favorite because it's a little bit lower. This is supposed to be a Methodist church. I mean, it is. It's supposed of, to be. Of a tone. Um, but the sound can then be an instrument of attention, 
of bringing our attention inward to where the Spirit is. Mm. And so I love to begin a, a prayer time silencing my heart and allowing the sound to um, quiet me, to allow everything else that is uh, vying for my attention to drop to the ground as you hear the sound. <laughs> And then, as you listen for that space, and it's really hard to hear when it ends, but listen for that space where the sound ends and the silence begins. And that is where we can begin to hear the voice of God. So let's begin with that together. Um, allow this sound, and I'm going to just hit it as a chime, to draw you inward mm. as we share in the same spirit together. Mm. Okay? Listen for when the sound ends and the silence begins. What if I get that wrong? <laughs> what if I get that wrong? I am I the am Lord. Lord. Put that <laughs> stupid <laughs> bowl, bowl away. away. <laughs> I've revealed I myself in my and word. My Hello. Hello. So when this... Wait, wait. It ended. Maybe did not. it end? If it didn't end and I'm wrong, mm. does it mean I'm not a Christian? It means you haven't heard God yet. No. Okay, so this is the kind of oh stuff gosh. that's infiltrating the church through Richard Rohr. And he's not the only one, but he's one of the most prominent ones. Kind of like what you said. There's kind of like the guy at the top at the of the top. pyramid yeah. <laughs> and everybody else that yeah. filters down. Uh, Rob Bell loves <laughs> this guy. Rob Bell, who has done a great deal of damage in the church yeah. just like Brian McLaren he's another big fan here we go Jen Hatmaker loves this guy and understand the Christ we didn't know how to think that way so um, I, 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 I always like to put a really perfect frontispiece at the beginning of my books something that sums it all up and this time I had three of them I couldn't decide between them so I put all three of them the first one is from Karl Rahner, the German Jesuit. The only really absolute mysteries in Christianity are the self-communication of God in the depths of existence. That's the soul. That's the true self, which we call grace. And in history, which we call Christ. So this is a really good example of deconstruction. Explain what deconstruction is. It's when you deconstruct something. Explain though that. Well, it's a, it's a. Um, I, it, I you just, take something that like like if you have you a building all, yeah. and you take all of the bricks off and then you reconstruct it to something else. Something completely different. Right. But you call it the same building even though it's not the same. building. And reconstructing means you just take it apart. No deconstructing. Decon take, right. Deconstructing. Reconstructing you take it, would mean you build you know, it. It's we've been wrong this whole time. Right. So first we got to take it apart. Yeah, and that's what. Deconstruction. He just okay. did it in that little quote there. In 30 seconds. I don't he even know that. what that meant. I, mean, I don't either. Grace? It, that's the... And I, that and that something about history? I've already forgotten what it was <laughs> that he just said. Let's keep going. Second, from St. John of Damascus, 7th century. I do not worship matter. He's a father of the church, if that means anything. I worship the God of matter who became matter for my sake and deigned to inhabit matter, who worked out my salvation through matter. I will not cease from honoring that matter which works for my salvation. That's actually orthodox. It's actually a, um, it's the antithesis of Gnosticism, which says that God cannot be involved in physical matter. That all physical matter is inherently evil and we have to transcend our earthly bodies and abstain from all matter matter and so this is actually positive i don't know why it's being used for, his for book, negative but yeah this is not a an, or, an orthodox quote so for somebody who is not very intellectual like myself i mean you know reading all these like i don't know how would you put it i don't know highfalutin <laughs> words. I got them fancy <laughs> words. I mean, to me as a Christian, what he's saying is just gibberish. It's like that isn't, that makes me feel out of it. Like I don't really know what's going on and yeah. I'm less than. Well, you know, this is a good point because he is a convincing, uh, he comes orator. across. Orator. Orator. Yes. Yeah. He, he sounds like he really knows what he's talking oh, yeah. about. 
And he thinks he does, apparently. Um, anyway, let's keep going. This is the early period of the church when we we're still recovering from the utter shock of the incarnation. I don't know what that means either. Me we're neither. Recovering from, from the, the utter, utter shock, shock of, of incarnation. incarnation. It doesn't matter. But the word had become flesh. That the word had become and flesh. And remember in John's prologue, uh, in uh, John's first chapter, he, he, the word Jesus isn't used till the 17th verse, right at the end. So? He doesn't say the word became Jesus. He says the word became flesh. Now, the Eastern Church developed that much more than the Western Church. And we're, uh, for the most part, products of the Western Church. You know? Where we over... Well, yeah, you're Catholic. <laughs> Just in case you don't know, the, the church historically was, was one body up until 1054, I think. And that's when we had two completely different branches. <clears throat> that of the split. Catholic Church? No, it's not the Catholic Church anymore. The Eastern Orthodox Church broke away and declared itself the true church okay. in Constantinople. Um, and then Rome became the center of the Western Church. So there really have been two branches of the church hmm. way before the Protestant Reformation. So um, he's kind of referring to the Eastern Orthodox as, as, as having some of these things more correct, but it's not really important for the... We localized the incarnation in the body of Jesus and then felt we could or should or needed to prove that, which is unprovable. So it put us on the defensive or the offensive, however you want to see it, from the very beginning. Uh, the third frontispiece is from, of course, our... Supreme Master of the 20th Century for many of us, Thomas Merton. <laughs> he, Thomas the Merton, Supreme Master? Yeah, he's another guy that you'll read about as very foundational to a lot of these mystical modern... Supreme Master. Yeah, no, that's kind of a... It's almost like saying, you know... You're Jedi like, Knight. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But no, Thomas Merton is a very, very important writer, a very unorthodox writer. He ends, I think this is Sign of Jonah. No despair of ours can alter the reality of things, nor stain the joy of the cosmic dance which is always there. So I believe the word Christ is one word, it's not the only word, but it works if you can understand it correctly. Okay, if you can understand Christ correctly, the anointed one. Well, he's going to have to. That's what he just it said. Us. He goes, if yeah. you can understand it correctly, right? So, so he's actually posturing himself mm -hmm. as being the one who has the correct interpretation right. of all these specific words, and he knows a lot, and he's old, and you know he's a priest, and he's been around. So we're going to have to listen to him, and he's very influential in the way he speaks. Well, and he's he's going to make it sound like he didn't find any of this stuff. He's just sharing this hidden information that's been kept from you, and that's why. Christianity's been so wrong. Wouldn't that for be so Gnostic? Long. No, that's not Gnostic. It's it, there's a, there's a, a element. There's a component of that. <clears throat> Gnosticism right. taught that there were secret things that only the masters would know. Right. So that part of it is very mm -hmm. similar to Gnosticism. But I don't. The other thing about Gnosticism is uh, this mystical thing, which right. he's he is a mystic. Yes. And a mystic, by definition, has that in common with Gnostics. Gnostics aren't Christians at all. A Christian mystic would still claim to be a Christian and still, in many cases, believe in some of the core beliefs of Christianity, but they kind of tack on top of that new things that they're hearing. And possibly, that, is could it be too, like, um, reading signs? Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. oh, this just happened. How coincidental. It couldn't be coincidental. Right. It means something. Right. I spent a lot of my life like that. I mean, and, and, and I had no idea it was not biblical. Well, and it's... It's uh, such a big component of modern evangelicalism that... Charismania. Yeah, but it's not even in charismania alone. It's in all of evangelicalism. Yeah. Most of the uh, teachers have some form of mysticism as a part of their teaching. So this is just at the... Here we go. He's, he's at the extreme end. Yeah. For that cosmic dance. In many ways, if any of you, and you don't need to, I'm not here to push any of my books. If you read The Divine Dance on the Trinity... This book amounts to the sequel to that. First, we had to get the shape of God right. Mm. And the God is relationship. God is communion. God is not an old white man on a throne. 
Which, it's amazing how many even... Who says God is a white man on a throne? I'm 50 plus years old and I've never been taught that even as right. a little child. Just saying. Maybe he's referring to some of the, you know, the paintings, like the Sistine Chapel where God is an old white man with a white beard, you know, and he's touching Adam. Oh, yeah. I guess I'm trying to personalize it. And I don't get yeah. it. <clears throat> Oops, sorry. Well, you heard it. What happened? I think you turned the sound off. Yeah, there it is. Sorry. It's okay. It's okay. okay. <laughs> Educated Christians still operate as if that's true. No wonder the Christian religion is falling apart, huh? Because <laughs> we think of God as an old white man with a beard and he's got blue eyes. That's why it's falling apart. So the Christian religion is falling apart and he's going to fix it. Yeah. You know what's but ironic? Get... What's ironic? He's got blue eyes and he's a white man yeah. with a beard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, I mean, his audience is mostly white females. There you go. The shape of God, right? Then what's the shape of this manifestation of God that entered this world? So, as I think I mentioned uh, yesterday, we can't presume that God just got interested in God's creation 2,000 years ago and left the first 13.7 billion years empty of revelation, empty of presence. Empty of love, Presence. empty of communion. At the poor Stone Age people and the Mayans and the Babylonians and the Persians and the Bushmen of Africa were, were, did not have access to God. You know why this is very um, engaging for people? Because I don't, I don't know about you, but I've heard from some of my non-Christian friends, well, a God, you know, wouldn't just send somebody to hell. What if they... You know, lived before Jesus, and they didn't know that Jesus came right. and died for their yeah, sins. Yeah, he's tapping into all the doubts and fears. And how about and... the people who live in a third world country who've never even seen a TV or anything, and how are they supposed to know about Jesus And, and after Jesus already came? It's like, yeah, I don't know. So you have all of these um, possibilities right. of why people don't know Jesus, and like that encourages a universal Jesus. Mm-hmm. Oh, he's tapping into all of our doubts. Right. Big time. And he's going to encourage you. And our you. compassion, because we want people saved. Yeah, but it's more than that. I think we also want to think we know better than God. You know, we want to question God's plan. I think ultimately, yes. But you have to come through and say, okay, why am I doing this? Yeah. Anyway. Let's keep it going. Of course they did. God isn't playing hide and seek. But we found it, uh, in our overemphasizing G did not have access to God. Of course they did. God- so he's really making Christianity in any form, Roman Catholic, Protestant, mm-hmm. Eastern Orthodox, any, any form of Christianity. He's making it seem like um, it's just another form of religion. like all Null the and religions. void. It's, it's, it's either null and void or it is effectively null and void without saying so. Right. Yeah, you're changing the meaning right. of Christianity so that it... It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter that Jesus came and died and he bled on the cross for our sins. I mean, seriously, right. that's what it really comes down to. You're jumping ahead, though, because he's probably going to say that before... Yeah, well, he's the blowhard. Hide and seek. <laughs> but we found it, uh, in our overemphasizing Jesus without understanding Christ... We created a storyline, uh, I'm making a caricature, forgive me, but it all depends upon a supposed sin that was committed between the Tigris and Euphrates River. Um, and, and supposed sin. That just isn't a big enough storyline for, you know, they're now saying when I... Okay, so God's scripture is not good enough. It's not a big enough storyline, honey. Oh my goodness. I was in college... There were six stars for each one of us. Now it's six galaxies. Did you hear that? I don't know if it's true, but I I just reading books like you're reading books. Six galaxies for for each human being. You have to say, who is God? Write that down. (laughs) Write that down. (laughs) Oh, well, he certainly isn't upset because someone bit into an apple. We understand. This is utter blasphemy. It is. He's mocking God. Yes. Utter blasphemy, and he's thinking he's got the answer. And I don't know um, 
what the story is, maybe I'll look this up, but even within Roman Catholicism, he is not considered an Orthodox. Oh, I would Roman believe Catholic. that. Yeah. But he's saying that Jesus and the Christ are two separate people? Heresy. He's saying that Jesus became the Christ? Heresy. He has said that other people, many people can become Christ? Heresy. It's all New Age heresy. It's blasphemy, even. He's, I mean, right there. Yeah. Adam and Eve, yeah, like, he's not believing that because they bit into an apple. And God's not going to be... He's making everybody laugh right. at the sinfulness of man yes. and the rebellion of man. Yes. As if, pff, obviously, that can't be true because we're not that bad. Because God's too too big for that. Yeah. Because of the all stories, the galaxies. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like, really? <laughs> wow. But, uh, wow. I understand wow. how you have to teach. Not mythic stories, but most people don't know how to... Mythic stories. Yeah, yeah. Adam and Eve is mythic, according to this man. Right. Understand sacred texts. They really don't. It's no, we not don't their fault. Uh, they just weren't Go made ready it for it. <clears throat> back that up. They weren't... You back have, it up. You've you got to hear this. I'll be quiet. For each human being, you have to say, who is God? Oh, and well, he certainly isn't upset because someone bit into an apple. You understand? <laughs> but uh, I understand how you have to teach the mythic stories, but most people don't know how to understand sacred texts. They really don't. It's not their fault. Uh, they just weren't made ready for it. So um, the Christ existed from all eternity. And let me give you my definition of Christ. One of you rightly asked me yesterday, where did the word come from? Well, Christ is the Greek for the Hebrew word for anointed, mesach means to pour oil on something, which is to recognize its, its inner soul, its inner spirituality. So an anointed anything was a sacred. But to recognize that sacredness, the ritual in a number of native religions was to pour holy oil, to anoint them. The word mesach in Hebrew became Messiah, uh, became the Christ, which means simply anointed in, in Greek. But we lumped it all together and, and laid it on the person of Jesus before we understood the concept itself, what it's saying. That's just so... I know, right? You know... Um, People who are really far down this path, yeah. you really can't talk about anything because the words don't mean anything anymore. The words have completely been changed. So there's nothing in common. You know, if I talk to this guy or one of his followers, they would just, we, we would have roadblocks almost immediately because... Christ means this to you, yeah. but it means this to me. Right. Jesus means this to you, but it means this to me. Right. God means this to you, but it means this to me. Genesis with Adam and Eve means this to me, but it's this to you. And, you know, he's trying to be really like... Um, Avant-garde? No, I, I think in his persona, he's trying to sound like he's gentle and he's just trying to help people. But there's a condescending. Oh, yeah. yeah. Which is like avant-garde. Like, I'm better than all of this. He's doing a good job, though, of covering it. Especially for this crowd who Not already is interested in that yes, sort of... Yes, that's true. Yeah. That's true. He comes across as, you know, this gentle guy who's really done his homework and he's just trying to help. Yeah, big teddy bear. He's just trying to help spikes you. spikes underneath. He's just trying to completely destroy your Christian faith. Right. So let me give you, I hope, not, my not too simplistic definition of Christ. The Christ mystery. As Paul rightly... Paul still gets this, whether you know it or not. He really does. Paul is a mystic of the first magnitude, which is why we often didn't understand him. Wow. Uh, wow. But the Christ mystery is whenever matter and spirit are operating as one. There it is. That's it. That's it. There it is. That's it. That's it. Now that starts at what, and you're the first generation Write that, down. that ever had. Write that down too. A word that for down. this. 
at the moment of the Big Bang. And what is this nonsense about the Big Bang being Jesus, the birth of the Christ? Seriously? Didn't start 2,000 years ago. Word for this, at the moment of the Big Bang. I didn't follow that. I didn't either. Matter and spirit are... Somebody was laughing. Whether you know it or not, he really does. Paul is a mystic of the first magnitude, which is why we often didn't understand him. Uh, but the Christ mystery is whenever matter and spirit are operating as one. There it is. That's it. That's it. <laughs> Write that down. Write that down. <laughs> Write that down. <laughs> Sorry. I'm going to be inserting <laughs> something here. And you'll know why we're saying this. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Now that starts... And, what, and you're the first generation that ever had a word for this at the moment of the Big Bang. Right? Didn't start 2,000 years ago. I don't even know what that meant. God started manifesting the God self. The infinite eternal life of the Trinity outflowed and manifested itself in everything visible your eyes have ever seen. What else could it be but the body of God? I mean, just use your Christian common sense. <laughs> what else? Could... Use your Christian, Christian common, common sense. sense. <laughs> what is it when you believe that God lives in everything? What is that called? Um, <laughs> I, I did it on the podcast with Marcia, and we talked about this a couple of times. That's what he's suggesting. Oh, yeah, it is. You um, know, God lives in everything. Uh, you know, in the stones, in... Yes. Animals in the... Oh, I can't remember the word. I'm usually really good at remembering I know, words. I know. I'll put it in here. Yeah. And there's two slight different versions of it, but yeah. This is amazing, isn't your it? Your Christian common sense. Use your Christian common I'm sense. I'm sorry. I'm and, laughing where I'm crying. And what I'm not he's crying saying I'm sad. isn't Christian, and it's no. certainly not common sense. No. Could it be? Where did this all come from? But you'll find that much more clearly represented in earlier mystical teachings. Or my own father, St. Francis, who's the first recorded person to speak of brother, sun, sister, moon, sister, fire, brother, water. It's all sacred. It's one sacred ecosystem. And it isn't divided into the sacred and the secular. Once you get it... Is it pantheism? Yes. There's pantheism. Pantheism and panantheism. Panantheism. Um, and I... I don't God know lives in everything. Yeah. Nature, the and stars, the, the grass. There's a difference between those two. And I, off the top of my head, I haven't studied this for a little while and I forgot the difference. Yeah. One is a little bit more of God being absolutely in everything. And the other one is where God isn't quite as much in everything. You know what that reminds me of? It reminds me of people, some a little closer to us than others, who believe that their church is nature. Because mm-hmm. they see God in everything, and they believe God's in everything. Yeah, what, what happens when a crocodile jumps out of the river and bites you in half? <laughs> right. Because that's nature, too. Right. There's I a, mean, we can, see, we can see God in nature. Scripture talks about yes, that. We can see the, the... But we don't worship nature, well, and, and that's what see, Paul talks about. We don't see God completely in nature. Right. We have enough evidence from nature... To know that there there has to be a creator to yes. make this creation, right? But we don't have intelligent the, design. We don't have the revelation of the specifics, which yeah. is what we get from Scripture, right? And um, uh, Romans, first chapter of Romans, that's, yes. that's what it's all about: is that man is without excuse, right? Which is what he would talk against, right? He Even has. though who who wrote Romans? Paul, who was one of the mystic, he was, he was a mystic. He was the first mystic. That's why he's so hard to understand. He got it. Yeah, he got it. <laughs> into dividing as if it's up to you to decide where the Christ is and where the Christ isn't. We lose every time. That's why we have racism. That's why we have homophobia. That's That's why we have sexism and classism and all the other silliness. Is the ego has taken upon itself to decide what is sacred. No, it's all sacred. Wow. Wow. And, and the, the true mystic uh, wants to kneel and kiss the ground every day. He lit. Except for Paul. Right. Who would. Speak huh? out against everything you just said was divine. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs>
Okay. Lives, she lives in a sacred universe. So the title I'm pushing for, the publishers are still, and Ben are still arguing about this week by week. This is a better title, this is a better title. But my preferred one is, another name for every thing, every and thing being separated. And the, so Your publishers are wise to not use that title because it doesn't even make sense. And it's Nothing not, he says makes no, sense. No, that's true. The title being the universal Christ. Now, did I forget my Bible? Typical. He doesn't Catholic. need one. I, I <laughs> Typical Catholic. Yeah, I don't I thought, think so. Yeah, I, I left it in my room. Darn it. One of you good evangelicals has a Bible, don't you? If you don't, I won't feel so guilty. <laughs> well, I'll go. No, no, it's okay. You know, well, you have Colossians 1. The hymn. I'm just going to quote the hymn in Colossians. Are Colossians 1. We've got to have some scripture in here to be redeemable. This whole thing is just awful. And I can he, read some too. You notice what he just said, you good evangelicals. Yes. He knows who his audience is. Exactly. He's, he's pulling them out of the church. He is. And he's destroying their faith. Yep. What? I don't even know what he was going to say, though. Okay. He said Colossians 1, so that's all I know so far. Let me, you want me to play it? See what kind of verses he's pulling from Well, it? you know what? Let's read it and see if we can guess. Okay. I like that game. He did say Colossians, right? Yes. Okay. Paul, an apostle of Christ, Jesus, by the will of God, and Timothy, our brother, to the holy and faithful brothers in Christ at Colossae. Colossia? Colossia? I never did know how to pronounce Is that. Is it Colossia? Coloss Colossae. Anyway. The Colossians. town where Colossians came. There you go. Grace to you and peace from God our Father. <clears throat> well, I don't think it was from that. That was the first two verses. We always thank God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, when we pray for you, because we have heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and the love that you have for all the saints because of the hope that is stored up for you in heaven. You have already heard about this in the word of truth, the gospel that is present with you now. The gospel is bearing fruit and growing in the entire world, just as it also has been doing among you from the day you heard it and came to know the grace of God in truth. You learn this from Epaphras, our dear fellow servant, who is a faithful minister of Christ on your behalf. He is the one who told us about your love in the Spirit. Um, I mean, I've already gone into the first eight verses. Here we verses. go. So, nine, so we have not stopped praying for you since we first heard about you. We ask God to give you complete knowledge of his will and to give you spiritual wisdom and understanding. Then the way you live will always honor and please the Lord, and your lives will produce every kind of good fruit. All the while, you will grow as you learn to know God better and better. So I'm wondering if that's what he's going to go to, to know God and to learn better and better. Let's see. Let's find out. The hymn in Ephesians. I know, let, let's try Ephesians. Ephesians. Well, here we go. <laughs> you were choked. Thanks Ephesians. a lot, Hale. <laughs> we stopped a little too soon. Ephesians something. Did he say um, one three? I don't know. Honestly, sorry about that. Galatians. Ephesians. I know. Let, let's try Ephesians. Ephesians one three. Yep. There you go. You were chosen in Christ from the very beginning. That's it. You were chosen in Christ. The problem is solved. There's not an apple problem to be solved later by an atonement theory. I hesitate to raise that word because I know you're going to ask me about it. But the atonement theory was a rather late creation. We Franciscans never believed it. And those of you who raised evangelical... Okay, let's go back to Galatians, shall we? This is yeah, a different gospel. He's going to, he's gonna, if I remember right, because it's been a while since I watched this, he's going to give the, the theory that the atonement wasn't taught until uh, Anselm in the uh, second millennium. Let's just see if I'm right. Okay. It's one of your four pillars. You don't even realize it's, it doesn't stand the test of time. You know? Doubt. It's a problem-solving tech. Which is another reason why we need to know what we believe and why we believe it. Mm -hmm. Which is why we need to understand history. Well, and and uh, I mean, we have just, to understand our scripture. Yeah. In history and scripture, and know exactly what's going on. Because when this guy, I mean, seriously, ten years ago, if I would have listened to this guy, I would have totally bought in. I almost did. We were going through that whole Rob Bell thing. 
That was more than 10 years ago, actually, now. It yeah. It was like 12, 13 years ago, something like that. You know, but if I was educated and I knew what, what we actually believed, that would help me understand, oh, yeah. well, wait a minute, this this is false teaching. This is not correct. This this idea that the atonement, uh, that Jesus died to pay a price to, to uh, appease the wrath of God. Yes, to try to say that that doesn't exist in the Bible or in the Christian church yeah. until, you know, centuries later. It's like, well, what were they doing in the Old Testament when they had to give a sacrifice? Right. It was the atonement. Right. I want to recommend an article from Chris Roseborough, and it's called Debunking Postmodern Liberal Claims That Penal Substitutionary Atonement Didn't Exist Until 1,000 Years After Christ. This is a really extensive article, and if you're interested in the topic, I will post it below. I also have a playlist on this topic as well. Right. And Jesus was the Lamb of God who right. came to take away the sins of the world. Or it's Adam and so Eve, clear. when they sinned. You know, God came and he killed an animal to cover them yeah. there's with all their sorts skins of, because the blood had to be shed to cover them. Yeah. Well, Jesus came, blood had to be shed to cover us. That's a type. There's The, the right. Old Testament is just full of these things that point Makes to... Makes sense. Yeah. Um, it's really disheartening to know yeah. that I mean, I, I mean, maybe the people who buy this stuff are are not Christians and, and they never were. They were just, I don't know. I, I don't like to go down that road. But no. Anyway, we, let, let, let's at least read the verse that he only gave us a part of. Please. It was 1-3, right? Yes. Put it in the whole context. Okay, I'll read the beginning. Yes. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God to the saints who are in Ephesus who are believers in Christ Jesus. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. I was going to do this. <laughs> How many times did you say Christ? I know, I was thinking the same thing. Well, that's not Jesus' last name. You have to separate the two as far as this guy's concerned. Yeah. This is They're amazing. not the same thing. This is so bad. It is really bad. This is like these absolute nutjob charismatics that are often right. wacky world, only he's in a different, you know, pseudo-intellectual version. Right. But it's the same kind of mumbo-jumbo. Yeah, it is. You refer to the Bible, but you just twist the daylights out of yeah, it. Yeah, you and, do. And you ignore what's right there while right. pretending that you care what's right there. Yeah, you really care. I mean, the way he did that with authority, like, oh, let's just go to... Let's just go to Ephesians. Like he's got the whole Bible memorized. He yeah. he knows it from, you know, front to back. And right. You can just trust whatever he says. That verse right there is not backing up anything that anything. he just said. Technique to a problem. No wonder why he did not have scripture with him. Yeah, he didn't have his Bible. Just like Todd White always. It's a good. To... It's a good thing he didn't have it. And I can't help but think, you know, subconsciously yeah. or consciously, he didn't want it. But we created. You know what I'm saying? and creates a father god who is pissed off at humanity and needs to be bought off to love us which contradicts the nature of love wow that's blasphemy of the highest order yes you know what we're 13 minutes in i don't want to do any more of this i don't either i think it's pretty evident yeah, this of where wicked. this guy is going and it is wicked it's wicked and i don't want to play anymore and i don't want this man in my house anymore. I, I want know. him out. <laughs> this is absolute nonsense. Nonsense. If you know anybody yes. who is into this, I don't recommend that you jump all over them because right. you watched our one video. Right. Because they're going to think you're, um, you know, basically the, the kind of person that he's speaking against. Yeah. And he is in, instilling people with confidence that they who doubt Christianity, who doubt everything that's fundamental about historic Christianity, though, you know, those are the those are the dumb people. We're the smart people. That right. basically, so you don't want to come across as the dumb people by just being too flippant. Right. So I recommend uh, you look at the resources that I will put in the description. Please. Right. And uh, educate yourself on that. Lisa and, Childers has got some yes. videos on this that I will put in here for sure, and, and, and as well as some explain others. Explain her background. Well, she was a Christian singer. And uh, she was in that group. Uh, was Zoe Girl. Zoe Girl. She's Zoe got a Girl. great channel. Uh, yeah, she does. A lot does. of you probably already know her. Um, a lot of people might We're not. hoping to do something together, but I don't have it all figured out yet. Right. But she's uh, doing a great job of, of explaining this as well as the progressive thing. And yeah. the two are overlapping in many ways. Very but not, similar. Not exactly, but right. in many ways. 
Um, what, 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 what I think about is DC Talk, you know, as a Christian rap group. I mean, our kids grew up listening to them. They don't use that term anymore. I don't think. <laughs> we sound so old. Whatever. But, but to see one of the They're, singers. They don't, they don't exist anymore either as a group. Well, who was it that we just read? He that? was the singer from DC Talk, but I don't think they've been performing as a group for a while. But when, when you think about kind of the weight that he carries. Yeah, yeah. I mean, a lot of our kids around the country, you know, they're now in their 30s. Oh, well, you know, he's questioning yeah. that and he's following this guy. There must be something just like with Rob Bell. Yeah, Michael Gunger. That's the other guy who did the same exact thing. He, uh, he had some just beautiful, I used to love, I've got some of his CDs from about 12, 14 years ago or maybe. 10. Okay. And he's just totally ditched Christianity for the universal Christ. That's so sad. It's really sad. And, you know, you can't, um, you can't fix this problem overnight. No. And if this really, really disturbs you, I do want you to understand something that this has been going on in all of church history. The fact that we have anything at all today that has like a, a core to it is because there was fighting in the early Christian church for the first three, four centuries. They held councils. They had meetings. They kind of shouted each other down and said, no, you can't teach that. That's wrong. That's not what scripture teaches. And that's how we get the three major ecumenical creeds that and, define Christianity. And the creeds are scripture. Well, they are a kind of a... con condensing of scripture. Right, but yeah. they, that's what they have. It's not like this is what we believe and they don't talk about scripture. It's all about scripture. It brings scripture in, which is what I used to think, well, creeds are man-made. Uh, not necessarily. You take a just This is a really I, good point. Let me let me try to clarify this cuz okay, you're, you're making a, really, a lot of people who came came from or, or are still part of what would be called kind of mainstream evangelicalism, they have been taught a whole bunch of fundamental things. One of them is we just study the Bible. We just believe the Bible. We're just a Bible-believing church. Everything we do is just biblical. That's all it is. <clears throat> and it's just not true. In almost every case, what they're doing is really based on a lot of traditions, many of which come from either the charismatic world or the Baptist world, which is largely a, a Arminian version of the Protestant church. It comes from uh, largely from either the, the Methodist or the Baptist in the Arminian side of the whole equation. And they have said for a long time now, we don't want to be connected to the Roman Catholic Church, and the Roman Catholic Church believed in the ecumenical creeds. And what is that? What are the creeds, though? Well, we if you, if you, if you if the, the Athanasian Creed, the Nicene Creed, and the Apostles' Creed, they were the, they, they were the ways that the early church said, what do we believe? Uh, we do have the Bible, we believe in the Bible, but if you were to summarize it, what would you say? Mm-hmm. You can't just do it off the top of your head, and you can't read the whole Bible. Right. Somebody said, what does it mean to be a Christian? And, and a lot of people in the early church for, for a long time, they didn't have books, and they couldn't read or write. Right. So they memorized the creeds because right. they couldn't memorize the whole Bible. They didn't even have Bibles. So there were specific verses that they would memorize, which would you know, would bring in the creeds. The, the creeds were a... If you took uh, condensed milk, it's a whole bunch of milk squeezed into yeah. a little... That's that's what the creeds are. From Scripture. From Scripture. That's important to point yeah. oh, out because people think it's all men and it's not. Right. It's not Scripture. It's just a way to summarize Scripture so that as a, a church body, you can say, what is the core of our beliefs? Well, the I would point to it at least as a starting point, the three ecumenical creeds that have been around. And so what would be really good is just to look them up. Yeah. What do they say? Yep. So, and, and if you watch our church service, church services, which I do recommend, Risen Savior Lutheran Church, uh, I have it as one of the recommended channels. You'll see that we recite something from the creeds all the time. And Lucy is here with us again. I'm sorry, but she really needs to howl at this one. Yeah, she she's been he sleeping. It. She's been sleeping, so she hasn't. Wrong. She hasn't been woken up yet. Listen to the guy. Oh, oh, oh. So you'll probably get me back to that, and I know I made a mistake by introducing the idea. What do you think of this guy, Lucy? But I have to say, yeah. Yeah. is he a heretic? The theory of salvation yeah. is so tiny. Oh, yeah. So planet bound. He takes bound. Jesus and he takes nothing. <laughs> to, uh, oh, is he just a windbag? Oh, yeah. Yes, I think he's a windbag, oh, too, Lucy. Oh, Windbag. Okay. Okay. The, her the heresy hound has spoken once She's again. She's spoken once again. She knows more than this man. <laughs> she does. <laughs> right? 
You know, I, I, oh yes, she's really upset by this man and his false teaching, and you should be too. Yes, I don't. I know that some people get upset that we're, you know, we're mocking, we're being too harsh, we're giggling. Yeah, you know what? Get over it, okay? This is a YouTube channel, and this is who we are. Right. This is what we do when we talk about this stuff when we're not on camera. We're just being ourselves, and we yeah, are. we're mad at this. And I think it's appropriate to mock somebody to an extent. Not all the time, not in every way, but I am not going to take this, this man, man is and treat so him like a brother who's just a little bit off. No, and, he's You know, we can all learn from each other. Look no, at how old this man is. I he's been in scripture his entire life because he's a priest. And this is what people say. Well, you know, we can all learn something <clears> from him. <throat> no, I don't want to learn anything from this man. Right. Did you hear what he said? Because I did. I did too. And that was utter blasphemy. Yes. He's laughing at our God. Yes. The God of scripture, the God who came and died on the cross to pay for our sins. Right. He's laughing at that whole thing. I mean, literally laughing. He was. He literally was. So uh, I will continue to laugh. I will continue to get angry. I will continue to even mock a bit. Uh, but most importantly, I want to just direct people back to the truth of God's right. word. Right. Go really, back to God's word. That's the focus of what we always do here. Absolutely. And it, it will always be. But we're not going to stop doing what we normally do and just we're, being ourselves. We're ourselves, yeah. right. If you don't like it, I, you can, I, I, there's I, other I, channels to watch. Yeah, and I do apologize if it's making it hard for you. Right. Some people say, "Oh, we like your content, but can you d get rid of all the giggling and all the jokes?" I'm like, "And get no. rid of the dog." <laughs> get rid of this. People even want to get rid of the. <laughs> this is our home, and we're inviting you in, and we're yeah. just sharing what yeah. we've learned. That's it. You know, it's what, actually as simple as that. We sound like we're apologizing too much and making too much of a fuss. <laughs> I think they know who we are. Anyway, I think so, too. Yeah, we really do appreciate you watching. We really do. Thank you for everything. Thank you for your support. Yes, check the resources. Like always, yes, do your please. homework. We said in the beginning, I want to remind you at the end, yep. I've got recommended channels. I've got a, play, a whole bunch of playlists on different topics. I have a playlist about confronting, I forgot the exact title, but something to do with the postmodern mm -hmm. emergent church stuff. Uh, and I will put resources about this specific topic and this specific man. And I want you to do your homework. Please And do. I want you to be confident in what you believe. Yes. And that's going to take some time for many of you. Yep. You're, and you're not going to learn all this stuff overnight, but that's okay. Just take a little bit at a time. And, and, and God will totally... God will help you with this. Absolutely. Yep. Thank you so much. God bless you. Talk to you again soon. Bye. Bye. Feel that just lifting. It's lifting.